Van, currently serving a 10-year sentence at the men's prison facility at Chino, California, is participating in a special work furlough program worked out between data products and the prison officials. By day, he is Dick Venn, Director of Supplies at the Chatsworth, California facility. By night and on the weekends, he's known as Dick Vengeance, leader of a tough prison gang. Tonight, we'll tell his story. We're here at the Data Products Supplies Facility in Chatsworth, California. But we're here to tell you a story about the men's prison facility at Chino, California. What do Data Products Supplies and the men's prison facility at Chino have in common? Plenty. We're here to tell you a story about a man who was convicted for illegally exporting SI-480 cartridges, LB ribbons, and LZR supplies to Iran and Nicaragua. It is reported that he made millions in the illegal export business before the long arm of the law caught up with him. Now you are participating in a special work furlough program worked out between data products and the Chino state prison officials, aren't you? Uh, yeah, what's it to you? Well, what do your fellow hardened criminals think of this program? Well, naturally, they think it's a great program. They all want to get a piece of the action. I wouldn't let those scum work for me. Well, what do you think of the program? Another stupid question. I think it's a great program. Gets me out of the slam for eight hours. Great recreational area. Great scenery. I love it. It's terrific. Well, let's try another tack here. Uh, when did you first get involved in the long arm of the law? Uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather not talk about that either. You know, if your story could help one other person avoid the same problems that you ran into, you really could be helping to take a big bite out of crime. Do you think it might help me at my next parole board uh, hearing? Well, uh, it, it couldn't hurt. Okay. Uh, I think I'll sing like a bird. Good. Uh, it kind of started last year mm -hmm. when the Ayatollah Khomeini gave us a call from, uh, you know, Iran. Yeah. Decided he wanted to uh, corner the Red Hot latest laser supplies and LB supplies. Right. SI-480 supplies. Yeah. Hey, good idea. Shipping a few goods. I happen to have, by the way, a little extra stock last year. Money's rolling in. Next thing I know, I got a call from the uh, Contras, you know, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Oh. And uh, turns out these SI-480 pellets are they're great for finger painting in between the bomb blasts. So a uh, little extra money keeps rolling in. Things are going good. Next thing I know, there's a press conference in Iran. Hmm. Knock on my door one day. I'm doing 10 big ones at Chino. But I'll tell you, those days are behind me. No more, no more illegal exporting for us. Well, no, sir. No more, no more Iran. No more Nicaragua. But, but, you know, I have to be honest with you. I've really noticed that you've got quite an ample stock here. As a matter of fact, someone might even say that you're, you're overstocked. Uh, overstocked? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think you've seen the, uh, the latest uh, FY88 forecast for printers. By the way, approved by JD himself. Uh, this ain't ample stock. I, I'm just barely able to make it with this. And uh, by the way, again, I ran Nicaragua's out of it. Hey, man. Uh, 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 hey, like, like, uh, hey, man, like, uh, hey. Like, uh, hey, what, how are you going to do it, man? Do you know we're on television here? Television? Yeah, television. Yeah, man, like, that's the box with a picture on it, man. Like, yeah, ah, television. Man. Like, like, uh, wow. Television? Right, tele yeah. Like, well, we, don't need, we don't need you around here. Where am I, man? Where, where am I? You know, some of those last man, payments like, that, like, that came in were, uh, were, yeah. were hey, cash. Man, they were I, drugs, you know. I was, like, drugs. trying we, to we ship this most box, of the, and, and I can't, most of the drugs I can't out even here, read this. I don't know where to ship this, man. Like, where do you ship this shit? I don't know what this is. This is a frame. Hey, like, like, uh, like, uh, like uh, where do you want me to ship guards, it, man? Guards, guards, like, where, like, guards, like, like, ah, guards. Ah, 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 ah. You know, I got a lot of enemies. But fortunately, those things are all behind us. Like, no more problems. Illegal exporting. No more problems. Well, there you have it, folks. An example of how a large company helps the downtrodden. An example of how a large company will reach out to help someone. An example of how a large company gets suckered into hiring scum.
You've seen it here on 60 Minutes. Buds, he is the party. So go, Spuds, go! This is the story of organizational conflict. It is the story of how two men work together to resolve their conflict. It is the story of how that conflict was finally resolved. We're standing here in front of Data Products Building Number One, the birthplace and home of the LB series of BAM printers. Normally, the product manager would stay very close to the product he is managing. However, in this case, that would be very dangerous business indeed. Dangerous business for one man in particular. Alan Taft, product manager for the LB series of BAM printers, has been in hiding for months and lives with around-the-clock armed guards. The reason for his life of fear? This man. John Capodici, alias the Capo. Capodici, reputed underworld boss, recently told the House Committee on Un-American Affairs that he made his fortune selling computer printers. A very unlikely story considering the lavish lifestyle he enjoys. Capodici is a quiet man. Quiet until the discussion turns to the subject of Alan Taft. On that subject, he is most vocal. The Capo refused to be photographed. However, he did agree to talk to us over the phone. What you are about to hear is an excerpt from that phone conversation. Mr. Capodici, we have it on reliable sources that you put a contract out on Alan Taft. Is that true? Miss, I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that it may incriminate me. Then you're not denying it. Well, I just refuse to answer the question. It might incriminate me. Word has it that you blew your top one day after Alan Taft announced the LB's market no, readiness no. for the 23rd time no. and then called you to tell you that he was only kidding. No, no. I refuse to answer that question. It might incriminate me. Word has it that you ordered your men to get Taft at any cost. Uh, well, it is said that you wanted exactly. him to sleep with the fishes. Well, it, it is said that you were furious because you had lost another big deal and that you were not going to let him do that to you again. Well, hey, what would you do? I mean, you know, the guy is, you know, I, I refuse to answer the question. It is said that you ordered his house burned down and salt scattered on the ashes. Well, it wasn't salt. And at a recent a party in New York, you were quoted as having said the following. What's that? I'm going to get Alan Taft and rip his nose off. No, I I'm never going said to cut that. his arms off and beat him over the head with them no, until he's unconscious. I'm going to pull his arms off. I'm going to tie raw meat to his legs and feed him to the dogs. I'm going to rip his heart out with my bare hands and shove it down his throat. Doesn't really sound that bad. I'm going to tear his guts out and strangle him with his own large intestines. Ooh, I, I like I'm that. going to pump 50 shells into his skull. Fifty, I think. I'm going to Probably chain concrete it. blocks to his feet and throw him in the river. I'd like and after I'm done having fun, I'm okay. going to kill him. Yes? Did you say those things at the party? Well, I uh, don't remember, but I don't think I should answer the question, ma'am, because it might incriminate me. Thank you, Mr. Capadisi. You've been most helpful. So, uh, by the way, ma'am, uh, where's Taft now? As you can understand, we are not allowed to release that information. However, I can tell you that he is definitely not at 6201 DeSoto Avenue, Woodland Hills, California, fifth office on the right, just past the water cooler. He is definitely not there. So there you have it, a known mafiosa who has had enough of LB product launches, a man who was pushed to his limits, and now the man who pushed him to those limits. We're here at this undisclosed secret location to talk to the man who is at the center of this controversy, Alan Taft. We wanted to get his side of the story and to let him explain why his life is in danger. Alan, you are the product manager for the LV series of printers, aren't you? Oh, wait a minute. I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that that may tend to incriminate me. Now, Alan, tell us why John Capodici is angry with you. So angry, in fact, that he has put a contract out on your life. Well, John and I used to be good friends. 
But every time I re-announced the availability of the LB series printer, it put a strain on our relationship. It kept on happening time and time again. Engineering just couldn't get the design right, but it wasn't my fault. Manufacturing just couldn't build the product, but it wasn't my fault. Quality couldn't test the product, but it wasn't my fault. Finance couldn't even control the cost of the product, but it wasn't my fault. None of it was my fault. So, how many times did you announce the LB's market readiness? Who's counting? It wasn't my fault. None of the 213 times were my fault. So you re-announced it 213 times? Well, in December, yeah! But it wasn't my fault. None of the January re-announcements were my fault either. So when did John Cappadice finally declare war on you? Well, that was sometime after the March re-announcements. But it wasn't my fault. None of them were my fault. You know, I don't understand why John got so angry. It doesn't, a good salesperson shouldn't require product availability in order to sell it. Just take a look at Bill Reiser and Ron Rochelle. They get POs from customers who have never even seen the product before. If Capodici were here right now, what would you say to him? Well, I'd ask him not to kill me because obviously it wasn't my fault. Is there anything else? Yes, I'd like to announce that the LB series of printers is finally ready for the marketplace. I'd also like to take this opportunity to announce that the LB3000 will be available shortly as well. And it's not my fault either. <laughs> Anything else? Well, I admit that my previous announcements may have been a bit premature, but we've had a problem to deal with, and it's not been my fault. It's not my fault! None of it's my fault! I... Whoa, wait a minute! Hey! What's going on? Kevin Easy wants wait, to see you! Wait, it's not you. my fault! Wait a minute! It's not my fault! Wait a minute! I got a brick falling in front! Wow! Are you saying the announcement? Hang on! Wait a minute! Wait, 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 wait. wait, we still got a problem here! Hey, brick quality! Interface issues! Okay, I give up! Hey, so there you have it. Okay, we'll the classic over. example of organizational conflict. The classic God, example God, of how God, that conflict God, has God, been resolved. We can all God, learn God, some valuable God, lessons God, from sorry. this story. God, 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 God. Differences can be worked out if only rational people would work out those differences. Since we filmed the story you have just seen, a few events have happened that are worth mentioning. John Cappadice has since gone underground and has not been seen in over a month. As for Alan Taft, please send your contributions to the Alan Taft Memorial Fund for the Cure of Paranoia. Contributions should be sent in cash and addressed to this broadcasting station. If the contributions are lost in the mail, it's not my fault.